When I worked at the makeup counter, there was a girl. We'll call her <laughs> That was her name. <laughs> let's call her something else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's, I just remember this woman was like, this woman would come and she looked at all of us like, hey, you have a makeup appointment. And I think she thought like, it's like a brothel where you get to pick the makeup artist. Like we're gonna be like, hey, big boy, you're so tall. And she was like, I want her. I don't want her because you're not cute and your body doesn't have any shape. She's like, oh, that's, it's like, it's like, good morning, good morning. Not you, you can show. Totally. <laughs> and I remember the girl cried and we were like, well, that's really, that's really disrespectful and hurtful. But like, but pe what? people would want the most at the makeup counter, right? We all are great makeup artists, whatever. But some of us probably are born with a little more symmetrical features, like classically beautiful things. Yes. And the people would want the most attractive person they can identify with a makeup belt on to do their makeup. But in fact, Get the dogs, mama. Yeah. Not the dogs. That's not what yeah. I want to say. <laughs> like the most perfectly naturally hot person mm. has never had to make themselves look that great. They've never they had to turn great. shit into gold. Yes. Yeah. Ask the woman with no cheekbones yeah. how to build cheekbones. Yeah. She has with the the um the crooked nose, the um the glassy eye, and yeah. then the thick beard. The <laughs> the person with the perfect almond eyes probably won't know how to cheat an eye shape or like, because yeah. they never to, had to. How to like apply uh, eyeshadow to your crepey, droopy 90 year old skin. Totally. The 19 year old who's like, I, you know, you want, you want the haggard like, sun yeah. damage. You want the woman with the bright red chest. In the trach. The tra <laughs> You're like, so like, I just wanted, I'm gonna do a little BB cream and then maybe like some brown mascara. Yeah. You're like, oh no. Okay. <laughs> that sounds great, honey. I have the to go. I have to look great for my new date. Now that you don't smoke, mm. you're going to enter the fold of being traumatized Can by those commercials. It? Can you believe it? But have those commercials ever scared you? No, they egg me on. They have, they're, they're very effective marketing. Not for me. They have made me never want to smoke. Whoa. The one where the woman's like, I wake up, I put on my wig, I put in my stoma. Well, see, mama, that sounds like, no, 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 not to make light of it. Not it hits a little but, close but so to home I for you. I don't, because the reality is that it's not like it's not a clear and present danger. It's not an immediate threat. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, not it's like it's coming, but not now. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, but it could like I could have already done the damage. I could be like thirteenth in line for lung cancer, even though I've quit. And if I stay stopped, do you know what I mean? Well, I remember when Kathy Griffin came out as with lung cancer. She's never smoked a cigarette in her life. Well, yeah, of course and, you don't have to get lung cancer from. Smoke. But I remember being like. So I put a lifetime into not smoking and I could still fucking end up with lung cancer. Of you know course what I mean? you could. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't like that. Well, I mean, also I've known many people who, who smoke their whole lives without lung cancer. Yes. They're, do they have the best breath, the best cardiovascular fitness, the best uh, speaking voice? Well, if you like, if you're kind of into that, I like that. But like, you know, that's the thing. Um, it's not the like the long haul. I can't even conceptualize that. It's the now. And I don't want to smell like shit now. And I don't want to have to go outside now and be an asshole now. See, you know what I, I mean? thought when you, I was just talking to Andrew about this yesterday. We talk about you a lot. And I said, I think part of what's made her successfully quit smoking is now that she has a yard to exercise in, she can go outside without associating it to, I need a cigarette to go outside. Absolutely. I don't even think about it anymore. Although when I did see someone smoking, it's funny. When I see a straight guy smoking, I'm like, ugh. You're fucking, you're a loser. When I see a gay guy smoking, I'm like, mm. when I see a strip, when I see a girl, any girl smoking, I'm like, oh, I want that. Cause you want to be her. Mm -hmm. But, but rarely I, it's not, it's not that I want the cigarette. I don't want, I, I don't want the cigarette. I just want the illusion back. If David buys marijuana that has let, you know, sometimes marijuana looks like a white long cigarette. Mm -hmm. like I a still am like, I'm not smoking that. Yeah. I'm like, that looks too cigarette-y. Yeah. Ugh, I, I just miss the illusion of like, tricking myself so heavily into believing that this thing that I'm about to do is gonna make me feel better. I know. But it's a trick. It's a, it's a good trick, a stupid one. I'm trying to roll back my energy drink too. You're trying to roll what back? Roll back my consumption of energy drinks. What do you have? Well, I love Three like Celsius. a Celsius before How exercise. Many? No fucking shit, Mary. But <laughs> if I'm doing that every day and like a black tea in the morning, it's oh, like- burr. I know it's, that is something. When I'm saying, shut up, you faggot! What? Ah, shut up! This this reminds me the Once this you, reminds me of the time. Do you remember when I called you inconsolable because I was I was convinced that I had contracted HIV and I hadn't had anal sex, yeah, or any kind of penetrative. Context. I had oral sex and I was. Oh, so you called me and asked me if you were going to have if you could exercise when you had taken half of Viagra. 
<laughs> I mean, I do have an MD. Well, I, do I have Googled an MD, it, and, and pers- apparently people take people take Viagra and exercise because it Vasodilation. makes your it makes your muscles pump. fill up with blood pump. more. They get that pump going. Yeah, bloodshot divas at the gym. We all know each other. <laughs> it, also, they go. A lot of people go to uh, to the gym on G. What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, a lot of gay people do G with every activity. What? I know. Not drive, though. Please I don't thought, drive on G. I thought G. G was just partying, go-go dancing, and sex. Uh, well, think about it. Partying, go-go dancing, sex. What do all those things have in common? Physical activity. You think? Why no? Well, duh. What do you mean? But I, I thought think? it was more about how you feel, but aren't you scared of G-ing out at the, at the gym, at the Golds in Absolutely, Hollywood? Absolutely, which I think is why they're all, they all get their scientist degree, their, their, um, their certificate, their dosing certificate. Can I, say, can I say the few times that I've had G in my life? It is always like an after party with like a lawyer, a doctor, uh, a, like a banker. Yeah. Yes. And the time I did, first time I did do G, I'm pretty sure the person who did the dosing was an MD. Right. Because these are educated rich men who have this 30 days a month normal life. Right. And then one day a month, they White need- party. White party. Fist, pills, <laughs> raggedy hip, like they go. <laughs> digest. Yes, like they go hard, they do. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I think for you, people like you parties. and I, that parties. vibrate between the, realm, the realms, mm. we're shocked by normal people going wild. Cause we're like, ooh girl. Yeah, but I we don't go though. to the dentist at 8 a.m. on Monday well, to right. work there. And also, I, yeah, <laughs> totally. You know? So I don't go to the grocery store after my nine to five job. Right. It's a different lifestyle. I don't know, but the the G. Uh, wait, what were we saying? The the, the the Celsius girl. Just check your heart. Check your blood pressure. You'll be fine. It's not great for you. Of co- it's not the best drink to consume. I know, but now that I've but eliminated, but caffeine is mama. Caffeine's great. I guess enhancer. because I eliminated alcohol and I like the way it feels long term. Do you want to go Gwyneth Paltrow? Now, a little. I have been like, should I cut caffeine? Like, do you want to be miserable? Boring. No. But why would, what if I become one of those 5 a.m. people who does an Instagram story about my chakra? Mama, I went, no, I, you need to be, go out, goon at the sun as it rises, get that natural, do the cold plunge. You want a quick caffeine? You get a fucking cold plunge in your goddamn house. Well, lately we've been only heating the pool to 87. So I think that's pretty much on par with jumping in Lake Michigan in well, December. Yeah, it, this is a little bit lower. It's about 35. Mm. <laughs> this guy, Crew Mahoney, that I follow on Instagram, is like a young athlete, very sexy. Um, but he's very motivational. He gets up, runs every morning at five. He's been doing it for 160 days or more. Crazy. Does a cold plunge every, every gets up at four or five o'clock in the morning. Does, what? Yeah, he's a, like a, insane. Very consistent. Gets up at four and jumps in a cold plunge? I think five, I think How five. How does he have a cold plunge? In his, he has it in his bedroom. Not rich, not rich. Mama, not rich. I mean, I don't know, but he looks like he lives in the suburbs. He's very young. Anyways. How many people who are working paycheck to paycheck do you know that jump in an ice bath in the morning? I don't know his financials. But that's not the point. Then d- d- don't talk to me about him unless you have his QuickBooks and his TurboTax. <laughs> but Mama, open you for have me. the financials, so I'm saying that you could do it easily. Oh, you I ju- guess you get out that you. Not, it's not the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. It's the best part of waking up is dropping into that ice bucket for three full minutes. Yeah, and then 150 percent of cocaine dopamine starts flooding your brain all day long. Ooh, there think? ain't no other way. I, the, the, the right value, they're the great value store brand of that that I experience is at night, David likes the temperature in our house about 40 degrees. Love it. But then when I'm, I would say when you're huddling Jack, for warmth, when you're Jack, when yeah. I'm trying, when I'm like a lost boy scout trying to get as much skin on skin contact to survive the night, uh-huh. which is how I feel in that temperature. Yeah. He has the nerve to be like, can you be less intense? You are all like, I can't breathe. And I'm like, I can see my breath, you faggot. Like, get on top of me. You have the nerve to be so warm, so fuzzy, and laying right next Smother to me. Smother my dying ass, bitch. Smother me, bitch. <laughs> yeah. you're like, like you're the revenant. I'm cold. I run cold. You do. I'm bald. I have no body hair. I'm mm-hmm. cold. You're like a little baby hamster. Yeah. Mama's gonna eat you. <laughs> That happens. I've seen it. I've Do you want a pet in here? I've se- boo. You don't at all. Boo, boo, boo. The taxidermy. Boo. That don't count. We've got four and counting. But you don't want a real animal. No. You I'm like not- dogs? I love dogs. You do. I, what I don't love is how as um baby responsibilities and also palpating uh, animal shit. Yeah. 
with my fingers and hands. But you came over the other day and that. you worked out. I'm so happy you agreed to do that. I was that. sore. Oh, fabulous. I was sore. Fabulous. I said, you know, I work out my arms and stuff. Mm. Uh, there was parts of my back because I was doing arms with full body. Yeah. I was sore in the front. Yes. And the back. Yes. Arms, fabulous. bottom up arms. Yeah. These. Probably that guy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. not just the arms, but like weird back muscles that I guess Serratus I previously last. have not activated. Well, these are, not, these are hard to activate. It, yeah. was, it was intense. The rowing and then the, the yeah. I love that little gym. You have a little gym on the first floor. Mama. And you want to talk about icebox? That's the, that's the ice bucket challenge down there. I yeah. work out in the freezing frigid cold. Uh-huh. And I fucking love it. This episode is sponsored by Rakuten. As a drag performer, fitness enthusiast, interior designer, plant mom, and Turkish pictorial rug collector, I have to do a lot of shopping. I always thought, hey, wouldn't it be great to earn cash back for all of the shopping? And then I learned about Rakuten. Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. You can get cash back at over 4,200 stores across every single category. We're talking Nike, Sephora, Macy's, and so much more. And the membership is free and very easy to sign up. So easy that Rakuten already has over 17 million members. If you know anything about me, it's that I love deals. In fact, my middle name is Delki, which is Russian for deals. My first deal was with Russian Emperor Alexander II in 1861 when I negotiated the end to serfdom. Ever since then, the deal moniker has followed me like a swarm of bees. Vanity Fair even referred to me as the Queen of Delki in their very flattering profile. And just last week, I went to Kiehl's to buy their amazing ultrafacial toner. And guess what? Rakuten helped me save on that purchase. So not only do I now look 20 years younger and infinitely hotter than Alexander II ever did, but I have more money in my bank account. All thanks to the magic of Rakuten. So what are you waiting for? Start shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cashback really adds up. Thursday, I took a gig at The Edition in Hollywood. Um, DJing at the, the hotel. So nice. What oh, is a that cool the disco room. ball place? Yes. Yeah. The whole ceiling is disco balls and some of them are spinning and they're all lit and it's mesmerizing. It's amazing. Sure. I get there. I'm in drag. I did a video and I didn't know how hot it was going to be. So I walked in, the air hit my face and I said out loud, you got to be kidding me. And then I had to, I only had to play for 60 minutes, but it turned into 60 minutes of, hold of on, hold prayer on. that my wig hold stays on. on. Hold on. Hold on. So six minutes for me in that heat. I can't do. 60. Six minutes. Yeah. I was so what hot. What is wrong with people? Why I was that... so hot. And then my wig I thought was glued on well. I had to glue it back on twice. I had to lift up the front lace. People are watching me DJ. I had to lift up the front lace, take the brush. I don't know if you've ever done this. Stick the brush between the lace and the head. Try to coat as much of it. And then I took a bar towel and I'm DJing and I have the bar towel pressed into my hairline while I'm like... Yeah. Riding this the jog <laughs> wheel, <laughs> yeah, and it was so hot, and I left, and I, I I thanked them all for having me, and they were like, "Would you ever come back?" And I said, "Not in drag, yeah, never again." Any, no, I don't think I can do a local LA gig in drag anymore. It all ends up being so hot that I experienced death. And now I'm curious, bar owners, club owners, promoters, um, business owners, what are you trying to do? Well, I can tell you what they're trying to do. They're what? trying to sell drinks. If it's hot, people buy drinks. Nope, that's nope. Th that's what they want. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, uh, no ma'am. I want to talk about untrue things. <laughs> Truly. That is. I know. It's not true. If I walked into a room with. That's a fiction. That's a fictionalized report. It's yes. fake news. If I walked in, there was disco balls in the ceiling and good music playing and the air conditioning was and amazing. Crisp, lovely. Yeah. I would say. I would call Brandon and say, fly in my bed. Fly, I'm yeah, living exactly, here yeah. now. Chain me. Do the chain. Hook me to the ceiling because I'm suspended for life Totally. Here. Yeah. Hooks. Hooks in the nipples. Yeah. Uh, Raptured up. Yeah. The cell. Yeah. Pin Jennifer head. Lopez in the cell. <laughs> I don't understand it. It was like my hell of jocks. It was like. Uh, What's every, with that though? I What's don't, with it? I think it, well, that particular scenario involved intentional torture of the girls. That was a little bit of a hostile situation going on. H-O-S-T-E-L. Um, it was like, oh, how can we torture these drag queens so that my sick, perverse fantasies can become realized? Mm -hmm. I think it was vindictive in a way. Also, just forgetfulness and lack of consideration for people's comfort. And then when you're getting paid $40 a gig, you're afraid to speak up because you're yeah. afraid of being difficult. Right. But now I've just been fucking around and saying it. Girl, when I DJed at Heart three weeks ago with Aqua, you know, mm -hmm. afterward they were like, I hope you had a great time. I said, I would have, it was too hot. I've just been saying I didn't have a good time because it was too hot. 
And then the club, did I tell you this part? The club, the club, I'll say someone, it was hot somewhere. And the club person afterward, I'm in my SUV, wet. Wet, wet, wet to wet the mud. core. Yeah. Wet, yeah. breathless, wet. And the window rolls down, I look over, and it's the person who booked me. And it's like, well, I figured it out. And I said, what? I said, I found out who turned off the air. And I said, someone turned off the air. It was that moment in Welcome to Me where she's like, dress. someone's been tampering with my makeup bag. I was like, turned off the, turned off the air conditioning. Turned off the air conditioning. I looked like Miss, Mrs. Potato Head covered in gun oil. You're like, it looked so <laughs> fucking nasty. I looked like French fries blanched and refr like it was so bad. I imagine you like Lucy Liu swiftly getting up on the table with the stand by sword. The next person who turns off the fucking air, I collect your fucking head. A hundred percent. But now I realized in LA, if, if it's a local gig, I just can't offer drag to DJ. That's all. It's yeah. just not possible. I think we it's need to have like a, a little paragraph that's kind of inspired by Kill Bill. Like, um, the the next time I walk into a club and the air quality is not to my liking, the price is I collect your fucking head. So if any of you people fuck with the thermostat, you know, blah, 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 blah. it's just it's a, it's unacceptable. I'm like, think like you're booking the Teletubbies. You're booking Big Bird. Think of the heat involved. Think, think of that. Yeah, um, uh, wool suit. Uh, oh, the, 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 ye oh, the Yeti, the Yeti, who the Yeti, <laughs> the Yeti from the Matterhorn. Oh, yeah. why would you bring that up? <laughs> you know, I don't Bigfoot. like that. No, um, an ice sculpture. I, I think of me as an ice RuPaul sculpture. Ice sculpture. That's what I think of RuPaul as. And like, you know, is, oh, I would probably follow RuPaul into combat. <laughs> only I'm saying that as a dramatic thing, only because because I know the temperature is going to be right. Right. And like, I would follow her into evil deeds, let's say. Yeah. I would, if I would. If RuPaul said, hey, do you want to come over? We're all going to be in drag. I would go time and place. Yeah, yeah. Because I know the air conditioning is going to be right. I would gladly be complicit in nefarious activities in the shadow of RuPaul because I know that shadow is crisp, cool, and comfortable. But I also thought, why am I afraid of telling the truth? Now when people are like, did you have fun tonight? I go, no, oh, I <laughs> almost did, but it was so hot that I didn't have any fun. And that's tough. <laughs> Yeah, I would have if the thermostat were at a, uh, an acceptable range, but it certainly wasn't. But it so I had a wasn't. horrible time, and I will never be returning. Thank you so much. Well, no, I, I was like, yeah, I will come back out of drag. I can't come back and drag again. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so once I've, I'm, I don't know. We get maybe it's July got, in California. Mommy, you got money. You got money. We need to. Um, we need to do um, some research in R and D at MIT for a temperature contro controlled uh, sequin cat suit. Sure, gel. You know what I mean? Those ice packs. Gel. What about like a Reno show? Like sort of like a um, Tabitha taking over for any bar that's hot. Yeah. Or where I, I show up in a Mister Freeze. Yes, and Ayanna Van Zandt. Kind of yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah. And Ayanna Van Zandt is like the fix my life lady comes. Yeah. And it's like not on this temperature. Not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> not this hot. <laughs> yeah, it would be so can, funny. Can I tell you what happened to me the other day too? No. Um, this is my tile, right? That I use to find my keys every day. Yes. Because I lose my keys and wallet and passport every day. Do so you I got really? one of these, so okay. I can never, I can never lose anything. Okay. Because my phone will tell me, oh, you left home without your keys. Oh. It's very helpful. So then I got two keys made, one for my new, one for my new house, one for my guest house, right? Love that. Yeah. I went great. to Home Depot. They had, I thought I'd have to, you know, you ever get a key made? It takes forever. You have to talk to people. They had machines there where you plug in your house key, it locks it in there, and you pick out a key on a screen Mama. and it makes them for you. Right aid, honey. And you never had, I never had to interact with you didn't have a Rite Aid? But I was at Home Depot. But you, <laughs> Rite which aid. is a Snippy's location, the one in Hollywood. The Shit. Home Depot, the the, the Home Depot Talk parking lot it. is a is a jerking off yeah, location. Yeah, you can you can hire an undocumented worker to help you with your yard, or get someone to suck the <laughs> fuck you big time, baby. I don't know how to talk about this in a, in a way that I know is the right verbiage. I'm disturbed by the number of people who are in the parking lot at Home Depot trying to find manual labor work because they can't legally work because there's no way to get people documented. Well, thanks this is Obama. a country that is built on people showing up, killing everyone, and taking the land. Everybody who came here was an immigrant. Well, see. But then for some reason we turn around and say, no, we don't like immigrants. Bitch, everyone who is here is an immigrant. Yeah, but Every that, single but person. But that's logic and common sense. That's just not. I mean. But if we want people, like if there's a way where we are so like, no, you're undocumented, you can never work. Is there some way where people who are undocumented could work, but maybe part of their wages goes to getting them an ID, a passport, a social security number, like, 
either you have documents to work or you don't in this country. And what is the process to get people? Where's that bridge? You know what I mean? The reverse of like um, in movies when they have prostitutes and it's girls in miniskirts, like you want to date gorgeous. It's that, but with men at Home Depot, right. we're like, do you yeah. need help with your yard? Yeah. Is I just was like, what's the solution here? I don't know. Movies? I think it's probably a livable wage. Um, the abolishment of ICE. Yeah. ICE needs to go. It's like, girl, if people are here, they're here. Yeah. How do you help them? Well, how about that uh, setting booby traps along the border and that pregnant teen got killed? Catch it. It's crazy. They're like, it, they're rotten. It's like the, our version of the SS. I know these are bigger problems that you and I can solve, so maybe it's well, a waste of That's why we're talking about Okay. Them. Yeah. I think it's what? 2 p.m. By 4.45, we should have the solution. Something, something <laughs> hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Home Depot is wild, though. Every time I go in there, you know, because I'm a HGTV star. Of course. Every time I go in there, I feel so full of possibility. Me and too. then I walk around and realize I don't know how to work anything Mama, in there. I was looking at doors. Then I'm looking at tiles. Then I'm looking at door knobs, chandeliers. I'm thinking about it. Lights. Paint. Screws. Paint. Hammers, plants, wait, everything. What about Becky, yeah. Roberta, <laughs> Stephanie, Dude, Jill? Thank you so much for holding on the foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. High on Crack Street, but it's very. Oh, did you see the whole thing? Uh, we could someday. I'm going to make a documentary about this. The way that America allows and sensationalizes female celebrities to be off the rails with drug use, and we still put them on camera. Anna Nicole presenting at the MTV Awards. Yeah. Barely legible, speaking yeah. wise. Yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. Amy Winehouse having a song called Rehab, and we're all like, that's fun. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. It's it's tough. I was like, I, I saw the meme of that, obviously. Like, um, Donna, Karen, Juicy, Dada. Right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You better lay low. I mean, it's funny. You better lay low. Yeah, yeah, of course. Funny. But then I watched the five minute full version of it, and I'm like, oh, okay. I, like uh, an emaciated, sweating Whitney gets on stage with a, like a kind of a raggedy wig and I'm like, oh my God. Man. Yeah. But I mean, I say this as somebody who put you in a movie at your worst, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I also gave you my consent. Yeah, I guess I just wished like, I don't know, people get help. But I also, I wasn't like. Like they walk off stage, it's like, ooh, that was kind of a ride. But anyway, also, are I you don't, okay? I don't do you think need anything? You, you know. You, but you did not. Um, I didn't set out to do that. No, 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 and you did not also, um, you didn't capture footage of me like, like that. Oh yes, I did. I just didn't use it. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That part. So like that you could have you could have Whitneyed me big time. However, the day the day that was the big day of that, we were on set with about ten other cameras. It's not like we were already in the middle of filming. So there was already and, cameras and everywhere. I'm, and I'm so thankful that they I mean I mean if they had done that, they I would have um I think I would have sued them, but I certainly would have like that would have been it would have been very so tasteless. Weird. And so pointless. They did the opposite. I mean, Vice is absolutely like. They it's could, hard they with could not like reality, docudrama, et cetera, because you want to be honest, but you also have to protect the people in it. Yeah. How honest can you be? Because you don't want to feel like, a, you know, I think yeah. it's hard. It's like when something like, it's not the same, but on Vanderpump Rules this year, they had that massive cheating scandal. Mm -hmm. When you're making a show about people's real lives, you can't control what their real life will look like that day. Right. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I, do you think the reality TV, the, because some of these hoarder shows, like the 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 sur exploitative surveillance, like it just seems some. I don't know. It's like I don't. Some of these things I, I just don't think should be filmed. Well, on one hand, what if Hoarders is a show that helps people start that conversation with one of their only family, their own family members? Do you think? What if, but it, it, is that data available? I it wonder? could. I mean. Listen, they're making a show. I don't think they are primarily a nonprofit. However, I do think there's a world where showing people having conversations with their family about how it started, the trauma, et right. cetera, and starting to fix that yeah. could help people at home start the same process. Yes, I I'm think. I'm walking on sunshine. Well, that inter intervention's different. Intervention also, I saw it young, and I've been scared of drugs my whole life. So there's probably people like me who... Maybe that was part of why I was kind of afraid of drugs. By the way, for somebody who's afraid of drugs, I have tried them all, but. <laughs> yeah, I don't think scared straight is the thing. I'm not sure what the thing, I think it's like. But also on intervention, there are people who, because of the show and the intervention, their life has changed for the better. Yeah, I mean, well, just in general, the, stati the statistics on recovery are so, so, so low. And so, so of course. Bleak. So bleak. Same with hoarding though. So much of the time they're like, the person's house was 
never after the the after show credits thing is like uh they never cleaned up their yard and their house got repossessed yeah they fused to the couch there and their corpse is still there yeah, yeah. the dead cats and, and the dead animals the the also women eating poop do you know about that there was an episode of intervention where a woman human- was addicted to pooping in plastic bottles and saving the poopy water and she would like let it ferment and then she would eat it and before she went before she went to recovery she said before they started renovating her house not renovating cleaning up the hoard she was like um no on intervention they let them get high one last time i and they and and kim kim the uh coach was like i have to ask why do you want to eat poop one more time before we clean your house and she's like because we're allowed to get high one more time so for her it was like a high from eating poop which is more than a hoarding issue because when we talk about hoarding we're talking about newspapers. people's trauma uh, uh, newspapers Old Eating. newspapers, yeah, yeah, um, um, old apple cores, um, p- poopies. Eating, storing, and saving poops. Well, a lot of times the people who are hoarding are over the age of, let's say, 40, 50. It's usually empty nesters, widows. So I think there's it's also something to be said that. about, like, I don't want to say the negligence, but there's a certain amount of leaving someone to their own devices yeah. that lets them become a hoarder. Mama, if I didn't have you know? guests every once in a while. Yeah. Ooh, there ain't no other way. I'm with you. I think these things are so complicated that it's impossible to 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 speculate. And yeah, and it's also, it just makes me feel a little bit uneasy when we're like, because the bottom line for a network is not about, <laughs> is not altruistic. It's like, how can we get eyeballs on this thing? And that obviously well, that's we, like relying on capitalism to never allow monopoly because of goodwill. Yes. People looking out for each other. Right. Like no this social whole social solidarity in this country. Well, Miss the Nanny. Miss Fran. Miss, Miss Fran. Do we already talk about this? No, no, no. I miss the Nanny. When she said, <laughs> when I did the Nanny, we all ate. We yeah. all got our fat paycheck. We all lived the dream. Yeah. And now if the Nanny happens today, the people at the top would eat yeah. and we wouldn't. Right. Look at yourselves. I mean, she's making these people go like, the problem with capitalism is it allows people's own perception of what they deserve to be law as far as how much everyone else should get paid. Yeah. Like the first time there's an A24 or a Bloom House that's equitable where everyone makes the same amount from the actor to the PA, we all get the same amount to be on the film. That will never happen. That will never happen. But I also think as much as I think stars and stuff should be able to ask for as much money as they want. Mm. Look what just happened on the Real Housewives in New York. What? They're all gone. All those women were let go. Executed? And, no. Oh, Andy Cohen. I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. They were all let go and a new cast was hired. And on one hand, it was because of like, you know, uh, a bad season or whatever that they had. But at a certain point, talent is, it's possible as talent to negotiate yourself out of a show. Of course. If you push hard enough, they'll just replace you. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch, there's plenty of alcoholics on Long Island to put a camera in. Right. So <clears throat> it, it goes both ways. We're like, yeah. I don't think executives and shit should abuse their power, but also talent abuses their power where it's like, if I'm a big enough singer, whether or not I wrote that song, if I buy it from you, I become a third songwriter, even though I didn't write a word. Mm. I think that's unethical. Well, the music industry. Or if you're such a big actress that when you join a movie, you become a producer. I think that's unethical. Like, really? Kind of. Just because you're the most famous and you might sell tickets doesn't mean you're producing it. Like. Mm. I think that it's I all don't, a little that weird. That I don't know about, but the, I know the music industry, that whole thing was created on theft, dishonesty, and stealing. Mm-hmm. And, and control. Control. It's also like a lot of people don't know this. If you're signed by a real big label, you're maybe still making records out of your garage. And then this label comes and says, we will give you, we will advance you a million dollars. Yeah. All you have to do is well, sign they away don't your know life. It. When you're saying... It's the next, it's for the next four records. And what it means is over the next four records, if you don't make us at least what we've advanced you, it gets renewed and you owe us more now. And people get caught in a cycle of they're not making good enough money to make their lab- label happy, but they're not allowed to leave because they have a contract holding them. So in a weird way, labels are like, well, if we're not helping you make money, we're also holding on to you enough that you can't leave and go make someone else money. Which happens a lot. They do it on TV where they do a talent hold. I'll just say it. They do it in renovation, all kinds, where they'll hold you as talent. And even though they don't want to give you your own show, they want to make sure you don't go do it with someone else. So it's not even always about goodwill of helping you. It's about making sure that if you're not going to eat with me, you're not eating with anyone. 
I know that. I know that attitude. And so, so much of this has to be just renewed. And that's why sometimes in the contract negotiation process, you do have to go like, can we be real for a second? That thing you're asking for is crazy. Cut the shit, Marty. I've been on shows where right off the bat, they ask for complete rights of my entire musical catalog. And also your kidneys, your liver, your thyroid, and like both your, your, your holes. I'm not Coldplay. My music's not worth that much. But asking for ownership of some shit before you even enter the picture, we, I should have the right to laugh at you for asking that because yeah. that's crazy. I know. It's, oh, you know, I mean, so many shows. Imagine if you're on a certain singing show. If you compete, they own part of your music for years. Is that American Idol? Or any of them. Who really? knows? I don't know. I've like, never been on those shows. The Voice And you, you sign that stuff when you audition. So yes, whether, when, when you're auditioning, you're, you're not, uh, uh, you don't have a lawyer, you don't have a manager, you're just never, like- You can't even imagine it. You're Bob Regular getting off the bus from Oklahoma going, derpy, derpy, whoopy, doopy, I'm gonna sing. I know we've talked about it. When I read Michelle's book, she talked about seduction. She, she was in seduction for two years. Oh, Michelle take it to about the cleaner. Michelle ended seduction two years Content. and ended it borderline in debt. And Michelle was playing, she, they were opening for Millie Vanilli, who was huge at the time. They were yeah. playing giant venues. Yeah. And Michelle was carrying the team's costumes, oh doing promotional radio shit all the time. And I think she was making, I forget what she says in the book, but it's something like $1,000 a month was her pay. On tour with seduction. She should be grateful. <laughs> but that's the way they would make her feel. Yeah. It's like, yeah. do you want to be a star or not? Do you want to be a star? Yeah. And of course for her, she's like, well, yeah, I want to be a star, but, right. and you're too young to realize, well, what's the other alternative? You go back to singing karaoke. Taxi dancing for 50 cents. I don't want to. What is taxi dance? It's like um, old timey, like uh, you go to dance with a girl, pay 50 cents or a nickel to go dance with a girl. Feeling up real? on my breast. Yeah. Old timey. Madonna talks about it in A League of Their Own. Oh, yeah. Remember? But Mr. Chocolate Bar, he's not shutting me down. <laughs> I love Daughter, that movie. I, I married a plastic surgeon. Yeah, it's great. Extra, extra, we are going on tour. That's right, Katya and I are taking the bald and the beautiful out on the road. So come see us in the flesh retelling the same old story One of as us well. may or may not interrupt the other. And we can guarantee that we will talk about a movie in great detail that premiered 27 years ago. That's right. For tickets and more info, please check out TrixieandKatya.com. Ooh, there ain't no other way. <laughs> Gina Davis. Yeah, uh, very unathletic and struggled immensely at appearing like she was really yes like, she sells it she she did it but it was very gangly uncoordinated and very unathletic yeah it was like a struggle to get her to look like she could be she a, sells it she yeah. does a split and catches a baseball well i think that's probably a stunt but yeah but i mean she, even to throw she was like yeah apparently and same as rosie 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 o'donnell same thing not athletic at all madonna I made all Olympic. that up. Oh, <laughs> I'm assuming Rosie was a little more athletic than because Gina she's a, Davis. Because she's the diesel? No, that's not what I meant. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought. Because she's a because she's the dyke march leading bull dagger Harley riding uh, carpet munching dyke. <laughs> when I worked with her, I took my whole body not she to say I with love. Her? Yes, I did that comedy special with her. Oh, okay. It took my whole body not to be like, a leg of their own. You did that, girl. Yeah. Luckily, the icebreaker was her, her girlfriend like Strixie and Katya. So I was like, oh thank God. God. She also told a story in Howard Stern. Um, she's like, Martha Stewart kind of, I think snubbed her or something. And when she had a, she uh, asked her about like, what, what do you miss the most when she was in the clink? She, she said, the, f- the scent of fresh lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Love so that. So she got her a fucking imported a lemon tree from Italy to send it to Martha. And I think she never talked to her. <laughs> Trees cost a lot. Lemon trees from fucking um, this uh, Capri or whatever. Yeah. I was at a friend's house. Well, a friend's restaurant. I won't say who. The, and and uh, I said, rhymes with God, these, pump. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, these trees are amazing. That restaurant pump, which is closed now, has yeah. these olive trees. And I don't want to say how much they were, but I couldn't believe how much fully mature trees cost to be like flown in and Absolutely. planted. My mind was it's like blown. horses. Trees that grow from the earth, from sun and water. They're like horses. Farming is a scam. Absolutely. Big farm, uh. Big farm, uh. <laughs> Farming is cool though. If I could be if I could be one of those people who like lives off the land. Oh, come over, I'll just cook up some vegetables. And then while we're here, I grab my basket mm. and I walk into the backyard and I pick a grape or whatever. You, a grape? I don't know, vegetables. Like a tomato. Yeah, like yeah, an old tomato. And then I brought it in here and cooked it. You could 
You could do that so easily. Vegetable garden. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -dum What's the secret to keeping the plants alive, though? It's hard to even keep them alive in the house. Knowledge, water, soil, Becky, effort. Stephanie, <laughs> Roberta. Thank you. So, thank, you but, wait, what she say? thank you for holding on the phone. Uh, 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 uh. You better lay low. Yeah. Hey! You better lay low. God. Anyways. You know what I also don't like about award shows? What? I need you to have a. I need you to have something prepared, but I need you to keep it short. <sighs> Nobody should have to be played off, because you know they're gonna play you off. So you should plan something short. It's yeah. It's like when I can. It. I know it. I can identify it so easily when the star is feeling it, and they're rambling because they're in their moment and they know who they are and they know their impact and they know they're like they're the one. But it's like a little humility and a little consideration and a little preparation. Will make you even more of a I think star. it's such a cunty mic drop if you walked up and said a few names and thank you and left. Yeah. Or be like, Bob, it, um, you know, like, uh, thank you so much. What, a, what an incredible honor. My fellow nominees, so talented. Uh, Judith Leitner at MCA, you fucking suck, bitch. And then you get off. <laughs> you know, and then that's it. Or imagine imagine if you won Best Actress and you went up there with your burn book. Here's all the people who didn't help yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's also, my first agent yeah. who told me I wasn't pretty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, this is the guy who tried to get me breast implants twice. Um, yeah. This is the guy who G'd me out at a party. Yeah. 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 Here's yeah. my manager who literally called me the wrong name yesterday. Yeah. The following 15 people are guilty of tax fraud. Bob, da 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 Yeah, yeah. Did you go Rita. to the Donna, Jason. Did you go <laughs> to the event yesterday? Go to the jail. Uh, you didn't. I didn't either. I felt bad. Did you feel bad? I never got an invite. Oh, because well, I was looking at uh, trying to find the address in my text and email. I never found the address, so I figured I didn't get an invite. That was my excuse. <laughs> I just figured I better lay low. <laughs> you better lay low. Also, I I don't like. I wasn't in a party mood because those places like it's very schmoozy, mm -hmm. and I'm like, ah, no. Is that how you schmooze? I don't go to anything like that unless I'm in the mood for that because I can't count on myself to fake it. That's to be honest. Yeah. Oh. If I'm at an event, that's the best. Is when I'm I'm at the I was at the Trixie Motel and someone was like, "You must hate people coming up to you." And I was like, "Do you think I came here because I wasn't prepared for people to want to talk flower? to me today?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Like, and also, don't tell me how I feel about meeting you. Thank I don't like that at all. Thank you. Also, I, you probably I, hate this. Don't, don't, yeah, don't do that. But also, also, even if I do, I wouldn't turn it down. I wouldn't turn you down right now. Of yeah. course you get a picture. Also, but I, I think I've mentioned this before because I finally figured out how much of a pet peeve it is. When people say like, when if I'm looking haggard, either like um, for whatever reason, you know, at the airport, uh, after the gym, not, you know what I mean? In yeah. public and don't want to be quickly. People say, oh my God, can I get a picture? I was like, I look like shit right now. I'm really sorry. No, like, oh, I don't care. I care, I bitch. Do. Yeah. I care a lot. I care a lot. I don't see this, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Diane like, yes. I don't care. I know that you don't care because you want what you want. But there's two people in this situation. Right. And there's there's 50, it's 50, 50, 50. Yeah. Does, does that make sense or no? Should I just be grateful to take the fucking picture? I think you have to take it no matter what. Well, I, I fought with a guy in West Hollywood who was drunk one night for like 45 minutes. No, drunk people. If, if they're because, drunk, because if was they're drunk. drunk, they get what they get. I'm sorry. If you're drunk. Well, I made the mistake of going out lobster red. I mean, sunburnt to like maroon. That's the other thing. I think I'm just going to no, say. That's my fault. You're gay famous. We live in a gay area. If you go out somewhere where there's going to be gay people, just you have to mentally beforehand go, I'm probably going to take some pictures today. So I just know. be ready for that. I know. I should have put a lash on and put some. Because I always put a little makeup on if we're going somewhere. Yeah. Because I, I don't... usually don't care that much. But sometimes I'm like, I don't. And I feel like that's my right as a person to like refuse that. And it's so, and if they want to call me a bitch or whatever, that's okay. As long as you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I'm okay with that. But also, I don't think anyone's ever going to call you a bitch for saying no to a picture. They would call You'd me a bitch for that. People uh, love you. They would never be mad at you for that. I don't know. Maybe when I punch them in the balls. If I declined a picture at my mom's funeral, I think I would hear about it. Do you know what I mean? Can you say happy birthday to Sarah? Sarah. Exactly. Like, no. I love that. I am like so obsessed <laughs> with that. I'm I want to so, do a lipstick like, color called no. happy birthday, Sarah. Should we? You should do a whole collection. The happy birthday, Sarah collection. Yeah. Happy birthday to Sarah. Oh. And you could do like Sarah plain and tall, um, Sarah Jessica parkour. Oh, the whole Maybe thing. we can get Sarah Paulson to model. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm and trying to get good at that. You should get her. To, so it's Sarah Paulson's birthday. Nobody says happy birthday to her. SJP walks in, 
but trips on a banana peel and dies before like she that. gets to age. <laughs> and then Sarah um, Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> Falls through the ceiling onto oh, the cake. Yes. And then I uh, need Sarah, a hero. Yeah. Like Tandy, Tandy Amanda Dupree. And then Sarah Paul's just like, no. Sarah Paul's is like, ah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then Sarah Brightman sings a song. Hi, <laughs> Jean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then Sarah Connor. <gasps> They're not a real person. No, but Sarah Connor the, from the yeah the character comes is in. Is chased in by the ter- all Terminators. All of them. The girl, the liquid, the girl, Arnold, the liquid guy, Arnold and old Arnold. Yes, both Arnolds. Both um, Robert Patrick, the liquid guy, and the, uh, the fierce bitch, and um, the other guy from the Genesis one, and then Rambo for some reason. Yeah, all the everyone stars. wearing a wig by Sarah Andrews. <laughs> Oh, the Sarah's, honey, the Sarah collection, honey. <laughs> and then Sarah Problem walks in and says, what's the problem? <laughs> Damn. I, I heard of that's a, a great low low budget production. I heard of a good drag name recently, Tamale Ringwald. Did I tell you about that? That's funny. Great, right? Wait, wait, wait. I just need you to know about it in just like that. Mm. You've never seen it. Never seen and it. And you never will. I've never seen Sex and the City either. That's right. So this show tries my nerves in a way that is so nefarious. Really? So malevolent. In what so way? So vindictive. So sneaky, freaky, and deaky. And so like round the way, around the bush, under the table, and through the woods. Like it is, they had, there was a there was a snowstorm. In the show. In the show. New York. Bombo, like a bombo, bombo, bumble clat. I, I, I don't know what it's called. Bo- Do you want to say bombo clast? Uh, bomb, bomb cyclone. Snowstorm. And she know about this pussy. <laughs> um, Charlotte's daughter is going she to lose the brown haired one. Yeah, she's her daughter, her teenage daughter is going to lose her virginity and doesn't have condoms. She calls mm. her mom. Mom, I need condoms. Her Charlotte goes out into the snowstorm to look for condoms. Carrie is going to a um leaving the house to go to a book talk in this blizzard, wearing a Tom Brown, like a, a coat that looks like Utica made it, like a giant, enormous thing. It, 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 uh. I don't believe that a woman, a girl would ask her mom to go buy her condom. I don't believe anything that ever happens in this show to the point where it's, why do people like it so much? I, I think it's just because they want to see rich people look, I don't know. At don't least know. in New York, I was just talking about this yesterday at the doll brunch thing. Um, Because Darian's from New York and she was like, yeah, I never dress up like this where she's like, when I lived in New York, you would never catch me outside my house with a heel on ever for any reason. She'd be like, it'd be like in New York, if you see someone in Times Square, you act like I wasn't here and you weren't here. Like, Mm -hmm. whereas in L.A., people people never dress up. What's athleisure? And when they do, it's basic, normal, oversized clothing. Very expensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But this is like a show where. But, But it's about. It's not about personal style here. Mm-hmm. Whereas New York, a show about New York, it's at least about people's personal style and stuff. Yeah, it's very it's very surface. Like you watch it without the the um you watch it without the volume. Who's on. your favorite character? Well, it's uh, it's Samantha, but it, Kim Cattrall because she was like, you know, Did as, you love her in the original series? Yeah, she was the only funny part. Right. She's the only lightness. She was uh, getting fucked all day. She was basically a gay guy. And the gays love her. Oh, yeah, cuz she's a gay guy. Yeah. Um anyways, the um the point is it's this just so insane it's so unnecessary but her hairstylist is really doing a great job. My daughter needs condoms. Ugh. I don't believe that it, I don't watch the show but I don't believe that a teenage girl would ask their mom to go buy them condoms. I don't either. I'd rather get Plan B the next morning than yeah. ask my mom to get me a rubber. Yeah, there's I'd rather him just fuck me in the ass. Well, she should have said, "Honey, just have him stick it up your." Your, your, your pooper. But then her mom would have to step out for an enema. That's true. And then the mom has to give you then, an enema. Then she'll call back, mom, but my ass is all shitty. Well, I guess I'll come do your enema. Right. And then the mom gets involved and it's mother, daughter, boyfriend. Virginia and then it's losing. three-way. Yeah, and but, then you know, the dad guys, calls and he gets girl, really upset. Straight girls, are watching, straight girls are watching two types of porn. Teenagers and, and milfs. milfs. That's true. That's all they want. That's yeah. all they want. Yeah. They, they want, they want... 
teeny oh. weenies and granny fans. Don't you want a woman who knows her way around? They want that. Yeah. yeah. Or they, there's like, I'm just like one of the girls you went to high school with, just with more experience. They want that. Yeah. Or they want like, what's a cunt? Is yeah. that a cock? Can you drive, What's happening? Can you drive me to preschool? Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally. Like, you want to throw your hog down this gray cavern? Totally. I've been and, 400 <laughs> years old, baby. And I can't even make fun of it because the porn I watch, the guys look like fucking Al Borland. So like whatever. Who's Al Borland? That guy from Home Improvement. Bearded. <laughs> Al Borland. Hey. Hey, Tim Allen, the Santa Claus. Oh, are you Al kidding Borland. me? Al Borland. Thank guy. you. Yeah. Thank you. Fuck the shit of um, last thing, last thing, I saw the guy pissing. Um, I, um, I don't have a hemorrhoid. I had, um, you, you thought you had a hemorrhoid? No, I just said, I don't know why I said that. And, um, and, um, I I'm, going back, I'm going back to the proctologist today. There is not a such thing as a proctologist. I feel like it's a movie Come thing. with me. That's my gynecologist. It, we didn't even talk about that. Oh, we did. The gynecologist? At the Barbie movie. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. I wish you would go, gone to the proctologist because then it would have been more inclusive right like i'm human does that mean I at some point hole. barbie has her first shit yeah <laughs> that must be a chilling well, thing they should have incorporated that into the movie like that like some fart like oh like no flat feet it's like what did you just do well i blew ass barbie just blew ass and she blows shit all over ken's like sexless crotch you know i would have never allowed that <laughs> By the way, everybody's like, why weren't you in the movie? Why weren't you in the movie? My character was in the movie. They died of lupus before the opening credits. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>